Hey everyone, my name is Armas Mikalauskas. This is yet another SpeedMe video where we talk about MySQL performance. Today's topic is MySQL microstalls. What is a microstall? Many DBAs and DevOps engineers don't know this, but their MySQL servers or cloud instances are experiencing hiccups. Short stalls lasting 5 to 10 seconds, but due to these hiccups, application is suffering a lag. And consequently, users are experiencing intermittent issues that seem impossible to debug. The reason nobody knows about these issues is that they're first of all rare, second intermittent, uh, third and most important, monitoring software is usually set up to run checks once every two, three or even five minutes and only send an alert after a few failed attempts. So chances for such an issue to get out are slim to none. And even if one does get an alert, there's just absolutely nothing he can do about it. He wouldn't even know where to start in order to find the root cause. So let me show you how to diagnose such issues very easily. This is actually one of the first three things I do on a MySQL server that I've just started working with as a consultant. And the number of times I found hiccups customers weren't even aware of is just mind-blowing. By the way, even though my customers often didn't know these stalls existed, it does not mean that their customers weren't noticing them. They were actually experiencing website stalls at such times. You know, when the site is generally working fine, but all of a sudden a single request takes 5 seconds and then you reload the page, the issue seems to be gone. Meet PT stall all in one shell script that will monitor and log any occurrences of MySQL hiccups, will log diagnostic data that will later help us diagnose the issue, and will email you upon your request whenever such issue occurs. It can do all sorts of other cool things too, but let's start with the basics. PTStalk is part of Percona Toolkit. You can install it very easily from the repository or you can simply download just the ptstalk with this command. The way ptstalk works in essence is very simple. It runs a certain check in a loop, by default once a second, and whenever a predefined condition is met for x number of times in a row, it starts data collectors. To start ptstalk in foreground with default configuration, that works really well in most cases run the following. Though I tend to send it to background and ask it to send me an email whenever an issue occurs. Default condition for a mask stall is when threads running reaches 25, meaning that there are 25 or more commands, usually queries, running concurrently in MySQL. Most often that means there are 25 or more website users waiting for a request to complete at that time. It may not be the right number for your server. You should run the following command during the busy period for 20 minutes or so to see what is the usual level of threads running on your server. And then set it to 30 to 50% above that number. Although if your server usually has 2 to 5 threads running, then set it at least to 10. To change the threshold, run ptstalk with the following option. Number of times this condition has to be met in order for ptstalk to trigger by default is 5. It's a good default in most cases, but if your stalls are shorter, you can change this number like that. Now the interval between checks. Like I mentioned, default interval between two consecutive checks is 1 second. I don't recommend increasing the interval, but you can decrease it if you like. The shorter the interval, the smaller the stall will be noticed. Although you probably can't call a 10 millisecond stall a stall, really, as some queries take 10 milliseconds or more to complete. To set the interval to 100 milliseconds, add the following option. Let's now talk a little bit about the trigger. Even though the trigger is preset to threads running, you can actually change it. For example, maybe instead of threads running, you want to monitor threads connected. Then it's as simple as changing the variable. But you can actually write your own trigger function. There's a couple of custom triggers I've created and used in the past. This slave-like plugin allows you to fire a trigger based on a number of seconds that the replication slave is behind. 
to monitor for 300 second delay, save the script to a file, say slave lag plugin.sh, and then use the following arguments to pt stalk. Another example is blocked IO monitor, which uses VMstat to monitor for blocked IO activity. It's not really the best way to do it, as there's an extra delay of one second from VMstat itself. But to compensate for that, I decrease PT stock interval. Here's how I use this plugin. These two plugins are only practical in very specific situations, though. In most cases, monitoring threads running is your best bet. By now you're probably wondering how safe ptstalk is. Well, with default collectors, it's actually pretty safe as all of them are really lightweight. Just reading from a non-blocking tool and writing few bytes or kilobytes into a file. Plus, it also has a number of safety triggers. For example, by default, it would sleep for 300 seconds after each collection cycle, a number that you can control with sleep parameter. Additionally, by default, it removes data that's been collected more than 30 days ago. And it wouldn't even start collectors unless the destination partition has more than 5% of disk space free. Once you have some data collected for a hiccup, it's time to start digging. PTStock writes data to var lib ptstock. It writes simple text files, and each file has a timestamp as a prefix, which groups collected data very conveniently. I tend to sift through this data manually, but there's also a tool called ptsift that can help you with the task. Here's a real-life sample output from ptsift. This gives you a pretty good picture and then you can use keyboard shortcuts to dig deeper. I won't go deep into the diagnostics here. If you think it would be useful, let me know in comments, but let me give you a primer. First, you want to verify that hiccup was indeed caught. For that, scan MySQL admin file for threads running, like that. This sample illustrates it perfectly. The hiccup continued for eight samples since the beginning of sampling and then went away, so it's a good sample to work on. Next, check the InnoDB status 1 file. It's collected at the beginning. You will likely find your answers there. Otherwise, you have over 30 other files to check for diagnostic data. By the way, final hint, in order to read the disk stats file, use pt disk stats command followed by a file you want to open. Besides the standard innocent collectors that don't have a significant performance overhead, there are a few collectors that you can enable manually. Do read all the precautions in the documentation before using them, and only use them if you know what to do with the data they will collect. GDB collector collects stack traces from MySQL that you can later analyze with PTPMP. It will block the process while collecting the stack traces, so do expect a few second additional complete stall for the MySQL process. Even though it's very offensive, it's the best way to debug internal mutex contention issues. OProfile collector will use OProfile to profile MySQL. That will give you a better understanding of where MySQL time is spent during the collection period, what low-level MySQL functions are used the most. OProfile doesn't block MySQL, but it does have a certain CPU overhead. To use this collector, install OProfile and enable Collect OProfile. S-Trace collector will attach S-Trace to MySQL D process to trace all system calls. It's extremely intrusive as it slows MySQL down to a crawl while running, so you should be very careful with it. To use the S-Trace collector, install strace and use collect strace. Finally, there's a TCP dump collector. It will capture network traffic for MySQL that you can then use with PT Query Digest to analyze the queries that were running at the time. I don't find it useful though most of the time, as it does not capture the query that's most likely causing all the mess anyway. But you will see the query in the process list and in ODB status files. We're approaching the end now, so here's a few quick parting tips. 
In all of the examples above, I have not supplied any access data. That's because I usually store MySQL access data in .my.cnf file in users folder. However, if you need to specify access data or a login path, you can supply that as follows. Same is true if you're monitoring Amazon RDS or similar cloud instance, although you're obviously only getting the right information from MySQL in that case, not the disk, CPU or memory stats. When you start ptstock as a daemon, it writes a log file by default. In that log file, you will find all of the instances when the trigger condition was met, even if the cycle count didn't reach the desired number. I find that file very useful to get a sense of the server stability. So now you know. Definitely check out ptstock. As I mentioned, it is a part of Percona Toolkit, so you just set up Percona repository and you'll have it installed in no time. Start it as a daemon, let it run for a few days, and then see what you get. I hope you'll find that your servers aren't experiencing any microstalls, but don't be surprised if they do. If you need some help investigating your server hiccups, you can reach me at orimas at speedemy.com or simply speedemy.com. Thank you for watching. Please give a thumbs up if you find this useful and do subscribe if you want to learn more about MySQL performance. This was Ormas from Speedemy. I will see you soon in my next video.